Good morning. It is so good that we can gather together, even though not physically, but spiritually, as we sit down at our computers and take out our tablets and our phones, and we can gather our hearts together for worship on this Palm Sunday morning. And today is the day of Holy Week, the first day of Holy Week, where we begin this epic journey with Jesus. Now, on this day, when he comes into Jerusalem, we remember his last supper with his disciples. We remember his crucifixion on Friday. And of course, next Sunday, we gather back together to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All that begins here and now as we journey through Holy Week together. My name is Dave Barkle. I'm the pastor here at Fort Walton Beach First United Methodist. And I have to admit to you, friends, I'm a little sad that this room isn't full of y'all and we're not able to, to worship together this morning. But yet we know that God is always with us. Jesus promises to never leave us and never to forsake us. And wherever two or more are gathered, he is there with them. So he is with us. I would like to introduce to you Kathy Wyatt. She's our director of children's ministries. She's going to share some of what God is up to in our congregation and how you can be involved. Good morning. We're so thankful that you've chosen to join and worship with us this morning. Um, I have a little reminder. Check your emails. On Monday, you'll receive an email. It'll let you know what's going on in the church or what is not going to be happening during the week here at the church. And then on Friday, you'll also receive another email. And in that email, you will find a bulletin that you can follow so that you can join in with us on Sunday morning. Um, let us know you're with us this morning by uh, clicking the link to the contact card sorry, and or visiting our virtual campus page. And you can also click there to see the bulletin to follow along with us this morning. Again, we're very thankful that you joined us today. Dave? Thank you, Kathy. I do want to uh, reiterate that we have an online bulletin. Uh, you can get to it from the virtual campus page of our website, or there will be a link on the Facebook uh, comments feed as well. Please click on that. It has every word to the call to worship, to the hymns, to the praise songs, so that you can fully engage with worship. We're, we're not just bringing you a TV show here. We want the, we want the people to join together in worship. So click on that link, and get that bulletin, and participate as fully as you can uh, wherever you are. This morning, we are going to continue in worship through our call to worship. Uh, Psalm number 118, verses 19 through 29. Jessica Fike is going to come and lead us in our call to worship. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders reject has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O oh Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal processions with branches. Up to the horns of the altar, you are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endureth forever. Amen. Good morning. If you would please now join me in singing our opening hymn of praise, number 158, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Hey. 
gracious choice. Alleluia, amen. Come, lift your hearts on high. Alleluia, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia, amen. He is our guide and friend. To us he'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia, amen. Praise yet the Affirmation of faith as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer this morning. Good morning, Father. You are the wonderful creator. You created everything we see, we use, we enjoy out of nothing. And at the same time, you are perfect, living, and a loving Father. Your unconditional love reassures us every day. Your image is ever continuous. You are the image of a friend, a shepherd, a teacher, a ruler judge, and a deliverer. You are holy, compassionate, patient, good, righteous, and gracious. We're so blessed to be created in your image and to be loved by you and forgiven by you every day. Let us turn our eyes to you rather than our situation. Let us focus our faith on you and not on our current world. Show us your mighty strength so that we might find solace. Let us change our focus to the amazing remembrance of your son coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. You said a king would come in riding a donkey. A king should be in a chariot. A king should ride something marvelous. But our humble King Jesus, who was born in a stall of animals and slept in a manger which fed them, and yet he still came into Jerusalem on a donkey. The people cheered and the people worshipped and praised him. Let us choose to turn our focus to worshipping and praising you. And as we begin this week a holy week, I pray that our focus is on you and not our situation. You have a plan. You have already figured this out for us. You know our frustrations. And you know what scares us. Let us turn our eyes and our hearts on what you've given us, your son. We have uncharted territory in front of us, Lord. We're scared. We're worried. We all want to know the outcome. We want answers. But you've promised us if we follow your word and if we have faith the size of a mustard seed. We lift to you this morning so many 
we ask, Father, to wrap your arms around Sharon and the whole Simmons family right now during this time. We ask you, Lord, to please heal the sick. Put a hedge of protection around each one of us. Give peace to those who are battling demons now, addictions, mental instability, and those who are caring for them. Give unbelievable superpowers to our healthcare workers. Keep them safe and open their hearts to know your presence. Give our leaders the guidance they need to make the decisions they need to protect us. Father, even if we do not agree with every decision, let us be the leaders as Christians and show our support. Empower us this week to share your light with others. And together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us not our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On this Palm Sunday, we remember what Jesus gave for us. That he came himself in body and flesh and gave himself for you and for me and for the whole world. And we get to be part of Jesus' work in the world as we participate in telling others about him, as we participate in the life of the church together. In that spirit, I invite you to please remember the church in the coming week in your giving. Again, you can give online. There are links on our virtual web page, virtual campus web page for that, for uh, fwbfumc.org. And then also, uh, we, of course, you can send in a, a check by mail. And we invite you to remember the church, uh, not just to keep the institution going, but to make sure that the ministry continues to those who are around us. Let's sing God's praise together. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, to wash away was
please join me in the reading of God's word from Matthew 21, 1 through 10. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him said, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The word of God for the people of God. Who is this? The people of Jerusalem ask. It's hard for us to imagine. We've known who Jesus is since before he was born. When the angel Gabriel showed up and told Mary that she would bear a child and he would be the savior of the world. In fact, I'd argue we've known about Jesus longer than that. This whole book is about Jesus. From Genesis to Revelation, it is his story. He is the creator, the redeemer, the sustainer. He is God incarnate. And so it's kind of weird for us to think that when Jesus showed up riding on his donkey and, and his followers and those who knew him were singing his praises and laying their cloaks on the ground and their palm branches down, it's hard for us to imagine that a lot of people in the city was like, who is this guy? Why are they making such a fuss over him? Yet this entrance has them asking the question. Now the way Jesus comes into Jerusalem tells him that tells us something about him. On this day there are actually two processions happening. There is Jesus' procession coming into Jerusalem, and on the other side, coming in the other gate, is Pilate, the governor's procession into Jerusalem as Pilate comes to maintain the peace during the Passover. And on the other side of Jerusalem, away from Jesus, is Pilate, and he is riding in on his mighty war horse. As Jesus rides in on a donkey. Now, you may be wondering exactly what does a donkey mean. Well, it's interesting. When a king came into a city riding on a horse, it meant that they were coming to make war. Horses are for war. When the king, as the Old Testament says, the king will come riding in on a, in on a donkey, what that means is that the king has already won the battle. The battle is already won. It is peace time. And the king comes riding in on the humble donkey to symbolize the king is not at war. The king is at peace. And so Jesus, in riding in to Jerusalem on his donkey, unlike Pilate who has come to maintain the peace through his awesome military power, Jesus comes to make peace through his own body and blood. And he knows that he has already won the victory. Pilate comes walking in with his forces, his armed guards. They have their spears and their swords and their shields. <laughs> Jesus' followers have some cloaks and some palm branches. Quite a contrast, isn't it? Here Pilate has come to maintain the peace Jesus comes in waving the declarations that peace is already maintained. That peace is not something that occurs through force. That peace is something that occurs through love. Pilate has force. Jesus has gentleness. Pilate has his entourage of the powerful nobility, the who's who of Palestine, come walking into Jerusalem 
in their finery with Pilate. And with Jesus comes a band of common folks, many of them poor, many of them with barely two nickels to rub together. I had a a friend uh, when I was in college ministry, he was the Episcopal priest appointed to the college where I worked, and uh, and Louis would say, he said, when Jesus came over the hill on the triumphal entry, it looked more like a band of gypsies than anything else. All the disciples and the 72 disciples and their families are following Jesus, and Jesus comes walking into this, and they are not dressed in the finery of Pilate's entourage. They do not have the jewels and the nice things. They probably don't smell as good either. Jesus is with the people, the people who need him. We see this stark contrast between the way the world wants to do things through violence and force, When Jesus comes in peace and gentleness, we see our own tendency to value the rich and the powerful over the poor. But Jesus shows us what it is to truly be like God. And so as we embark on Holy Week, we have to answer the same question the inhabitants of Jerusalem had to answer. Who is he? Who is Jesus to us? Will we follow Jesus' way of gentleness, of humility, of looking after those who are little in the eyes of the world? Do we follow Jesus or do we follow Pilate and celebrate force and power and wealth? By the way, there's one more procession on this Sunday before the Passover. It's called the procession of the lambs. On this day, the shepherds around Jerusalem, there in Judea, would gather up all the best lambs of the spring. All those lambs that were without spot or without blemish and had no broken bones, they would take those lambs and they would herd them into Jerusalem. And these lambs were to become the sacrifices for the Passover celebration. And as Jesus is making his way into Jerusalem and his procession of common people, as Pilate is making his way in his procession of power, the little lambs are coming in, not realizing they are coming to slaughter. But I don't think Jesus' timing is coincidental here. Because ultimately, when we ask, who is Jesus to us, the words of John the Baptist return. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We follow Jesus because he shows us a better way. We follow Jesus because he has saved us. He has taken all of our guilt and shame, everything we have ever done wrong, everything that would separate us from him and from the Father. Jesus is the perfect, spotless Lamb of God who takes away our sins. And how can we do anything but follow him to put down the ways of the world, to put aside the ways of Pilate, and to embrace his peace and his gentleness because he has put it in our hearts. Who is he? He is the Lamb of God, the triumphant Lion of Judah, our Lord and our Savior. Walk with him this week. Take time to to read your Bible about the events of of this week. Tune in to the services we're going to be offering on Thursday night and, and Friday night to meditate on God's Word and answer the question, Who is this man for yourself? Who is this man to you this week? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our final hymn this morning is When Morning Gilds the Skies. We invite Brian to come up and to lead us in our closing hymn. Wherever you are, 
Uh, whether you sing great or you barely sing at all, I invite you to look at your online bulletin and join your heart with us in song. now all this week, may your heart be praising our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as he entered Jerusalem, may he enter your life. As he changed Jerusalem, may he change your life. And as he redeemed those people there, may he redeem your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.